Hey there, THP 494 and 598. So we have just done some serious uh, replicating here. And now what we want to do is we want to start to pull apart the difference between just replicating and instancing. And why on earth do I care about the difference between those things? All right, so to get us started, let's go ahead and let's back out of this particular base. Let's go ahead and let's add another base. And this base we're going to call instance. And let's dive inside. Okay, so now what we're going to start to think about is how do we draw multiple things, right? So if, if replicating is about making copies of anything, instancing is about the very specific example of wanting to draw Right? wanting to actually um, create something in 3D space uh, on our GPU as efficiently as possible. Right? This is entirely about pixels. This is like pixels, pixels, pixels. And replicators could be about pixels, but they don't have to be. Right? This is kind of analogous, again, to the idea of a square and a rectangle. Right? Replicating certainly can do a lot of the same things, but not, might not be as efficient. A square, this is a very specific and um, uh, explicit example and condition of what that other thing is like. And that's not totally true, right? Like, let's face it, that's not a perfect analogy. But if we're trying on that idea, if we're really trying to wrap our heads around it and hold on to what it means, this is a very specific example of how we can draw something uh, multiple times. And in our case, as efficiently as possible. Okay, so to do this, we're going to need to do some rendering. So let's go ahead and get that part out of the way. We're going to add a geo, a camera, and a light. We're also going to want to go ahead and add into our scene a render top. And we're going to just kind of stick this over in our network and we're going to let it hang out because we're going to come back to it. Uh, before we go too far, let's go ahead and uh, come in here in our torus and let's zap that and let's add a rectangle. And we'll set it to display and render. And let's shrink down its dimensions, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Just for right now, we'll end up scaling it up. But for right now, we're going to make this cute little small square. OK, hold on to your horses. We're going to come back to this. So for right now, we're just going to let it be like the beetle said. And it's just going to hang out. OK, so to get started, we need some specific instructions about where we're going to draw our multiple copies of something. Now, we can take advantage of the fact that we could use surface operators, right? We can use pieces of 3D geometry to help us figure out what that even means. All right, so let's start with a line. So we're going to start with a line, and we're going to draw a series of points on this line. Like, let's say that we've got five points on this line. So if I make this viewer active and then hit um, P for display options, I can turn on the points and I can see, lo and behold, point one, two, three, four, five. I've got five points on this line. Excellent. I can also see that this starts at zero, zero, zero and goes to one, zero, zero. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit farther. I'm going to make it go all the way to say like four. So it's going to stretch a little bit farther. Excellent. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a null to the end of this. We are going to change it. Don't you worry, you're a pretty little head. We're going to come back to it. Uh, and then once we've got this null, we're going to convert this into some information that we could take advantage of when we're instancing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the SOP2. And then we're going to attach this to a null just in case for any reason we wanted to make some changes to it. Not that we would, but we could if we wanted to. Okay. So now, how could we use the points on this line to draw this rectangle multiple places, right? That's what I want to do. Because I could, right, like there are lots of ways that I could do that, but they start to become really inefficient and they start to slow way down. Instancing is a way that we can do this almost entirely on our GPU, and it's incredibly fast and much more efficient than other ways that we might think about doing this particular operation. Okay, so first off, we're going to head to instancing. We're going to turn instancing on. We're going to drag 
uh, our null two right over there, we're going to specify the x, y, and z coordinates that are associated with this. And lo and behold, we're starting to see our, our um, squares. So let's just move our camera a little bit here. And we can move it on the x position. And let's just back up just like a skosh. And there we can see we've drawn our one, two, three, four, five. We've drawn our five rectangles here on this imaginary line. Okay, well, where's the line? Well, lo and behold, we're not actually displaying or rendering it. So we can't see it, right? It's, it doesn't exist to us because we're not actually drawing it yet. We could, right, we might scooch this down and we might right click on our line and we might make a geo and dump that over here. And if we uh, zoom in here, oh, we can't quite see it yet. We probably actually need to add a material. Let's add a constant and assign that material to both our, our line and to our um, rectangles. And now we can see that line and the points on that line where we're actually drawing our instances. Okay, that's that's pretty all right. So how do we make this move, right? Like that's starting to get interesting, um, but can we make that a little more interesting? And you know what? I would love for us to make that a little more interesting. So in that uh, vein, I'm going to move my constant up here. Let's think about how we might introduce a little bit of noise to this, right? And we might think about um, how we could do that uh, with other things we've done. So we could try adding a noise stop. And hmm, that doesn't seem to do quite what we wanted. Well, that's silly. So how do we do this? So what we're going to do is we're first going to convert this to channel data. And then uh, what we're going to do is we might actually um, do something fun like this. Like, let's go ahead and add some noise. And this is similar to what we've done before. Oops, we're going to disconnect these guys. Uh, in my noise one here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this uh, to have the same number of channels, right? I'm going to change this from seconds to samples. And I'm going to specify that it's going to have the same number of samples as the operator SOP2, two, 2, this guy up here. And I want num chan, num samples, excuse me, samples minus one. All right, well, that's pretty uh, boring looking. That's not very interesting, right? So let's go here to our noise and let's maybe turn our period way down. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. And let's go ahead in our channel. We want T, we want X, Y, Z. So now we've got three channels that match our three channels up here. Good, and let's go ahead in our transform. Uh, let's give this a little bit of action here. So abs time dot seconds, and let's multiply that by 0 0.1. All right, that's starting to wiggle and move. Let's add a cross. So we can plug both of these into our cross. And this is again going to allow us to kind of cross fade between these two. I like that. And then last but not least, we're going to add a chop to SOP. And let's go ahead and plug this right into our chop to SOP. So now we should be able to see that if we move this cross a little bit, uh oh, now we get a little bit of noisy, noisy action going on, which is great. Uh, we might decide, right, so X here isn't doing exactly what we want. So maybe what we want to do is we only want to worry about T, uh, Y, and Z. Now we're stuck here, right, because it looks like TX matches TZ. Well, what are we going to do? We could, to solve this problem, let's go ahead and... Uh, well, we could select. This is a great way to solve this problem. So let's uh, clear out what's going on over here first. So we're going to 
first connect our just general line over here. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is we act might actually uh, want to go ahead and use some math because we might want to scale this a little bit. We'll kind of leave that as a placeholder. Scooch this over just a little. Out of this we're going to select just the TX channel and then we're going to merge. So we're going to take these two guys, we're going to merge them all together, so now we've got an XYZ, TXYZ, that all fits together. We'll put that into our cross, and now we should maintain our X distribution, but our Y and Z are what move. And we can see here that this isn't a whole lot of movement, so maybe what we want to do in our math is we could use our math to then increase our range a little bit. So maybe our negative one to one is actually going to be more like negative two to two. And that gives us a little more movement. We can maybe crank that even to 2.5 and 2.5. Right, and now we've got some real dancing going on over here. Okay. So this is moving in a really interesting and jamming direction. And I like where it's kind of like getting itself to. That's all right. Whoa, that's maybe like a little bit too much. So let's go negative 2.0 to 2.0. Okay. So how do we then take this, right? This is a great little thing that we've got going on. And how could I draw my words at each one of these points? So how could I use those two ideas together? And in fact, that's what we're going to do next. Right, so now that we've done our instancing where we're just drawing this simple little rectangle in the position that's happening on that line, now how do we draw different textures, right? How do we do texture instancing? And that is what we're going to look at next. <laughs>